TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. A deadly ramming attack in Jerusalem claims the lives of two Israelis and leaves five others in varied degrees of injuries. Israel sends additional aid to Turkey in a proactive effort to save lives. Belgian authorities arrest additional members of the European Parliament as part of a probe related to the so-called Qatalgate. A deadly terror attack plagued Israel's capital, Jerusalem, earlier today when an abhorrent terrorist rammed his vehicle into a bus stop crowded with Israeli civilians. The terror attack occurred several minutes before 1.30 p.m. earlier today when a Palestinian resident of East Jerusalem accelerated his vehicle into the crowded bus stop situated at the Golda Meir Minch intersection just outside of the neighborhood of Ramot. An off-duty police officer who witnessed a ramming attack alongside an active-duty police officer immediately engaged a terrorist and eliminated the threat. Today, שהצטרף ונטרלו ביחד את המפגע. מפקד מאבקל המשטרה ומפקד מחוז ירושלים הגיעו למקום, קיימו הערכת מצב. אנחנו כרגע בראשיתה, בראשיתו של האירוע ומתקדמים הלאה בחקירה. אני יכול, לציין, אני יכול לציין שמדובר בתושב מזרח ירושלים בן 30, שהאיץ את נסיעתו, אנחנו יודעים להגיד שהוא האיץ את נסיעתו לכיוון התחנה. ופגע במספר צעירים שהיו בתחנת אוטובוס, המתינו להסע. Medical teams confirm that two victims, including a six-year-old boy and 20-year-old man, succumbed to their wounds, while five others sustained injuries, including an eight-year-old child, was diagnosed in critical condition. ליחידת הטראומה של המרכז הרפואי עם שערי צדק הגיעו ארבעה נפגעים מפיגוע הדריסה. נפגע אחד בשנות ה-20 או ה-30 לחייו הגיע בהחייאה. ביצענו פעולות דחופות, כולל ניתוח דחוף, אך לצערנו נאלץ לתבוע את מותו. הילד כבן שמונה הגיע גם כן בהחייאה. ביצענו ניתוח דחוף בחדר הטראומה. הצלחנו להחזיר לו דופק, ובעצם כעת הוא נמצא במצב אנוש בחדר ניתוח. הגיעו עוד שני פצועים, פציעות באיברי גופם העליונים והתחתונים. הם במצב בינוני. Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog released a statement following the deadly terror attack in which he stressed, quote, Just before Shabbat, our hearts are pained by the terrible news of a despicable terrorist who took the lives of a little boy and a young man in a car ramming attack in Jerusalem. Together with the people of Israel, I grieve with the families and pray for the recovery of the injured. Moreover, in response to the attack, Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu instructed to reinforce security units in the field. In addition, the Premier also directed the security establishment to take immediate action to seal and demolish the home of the terrorist in accordance with Israeli law. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Netanyahu held a phone conversation with commander of the Israeli Search and Rescue Brigade Colonel Elad Edri who commands the Israeli Search and Rescue Brigade in Turkey's quake-stricken regions, during which he emphasized the importance of Israel's efforts to assist the people of Turkey in their hour of need. אמירה ידועה, כל המציל נפש אחת, כאילו הוציא עולם ומלואו, אתם כבר הצלתם כמה עולמות. ובאמת כל הכבוד לכם, ותמשיכו ותשמרו על עצמכם גם כן. אני מבקש שתעביר את זה לכל אחד ואחת מחברי המשלחת. אין זכות גדולה יותר למפקד בצבאנו מלהוביל משלחת כזאת. אני מרגיש את כל המדינה מאחוריי, וכאילו שהמדינה שלחה את היד הכי רחוק שיכולה עם כל הכוח שלה. 
ושמה אותנו כאן להציל חיים, וזה לא נשמח. אנחנו היום כבר עומדים על 17 מחולצי חיים. כל הכבוד. קרוב מלפני שעה, ולפני כשעתיים פתחנו את בית חולים, 140 אנשי צוות, עובדים כבר. It is worth noting that Israel deployed the second largest mission of over 450 members, including 140 doctors and nurses, to assist Turkey in its hour of need. In addition, Israel is ratcheting up its transfer of humanitarian assistance, 60 tons of vital supplies this time, aimed at accommodating the hundreds of thousands of people who lost everything in the wake of the devastating quake. ההתגייסות של מדינת ישראל היא מקור לגאווה לאומית. בשעה קשה זאת אנחנו מתייצבים לצד העם הטורקי ואנחנו נמצאים בקשר שוטף ורציף עם הרשויות בטורקיה על מנת לתת את כל הסיוע ההומניטרי הנדרש לטובת הניצולים. Turning to Belgium, war authorities arrested member of the European Parliament, Mark Tarabella, who had recently been ejected from his radical left socialist party, as part of an investigation connected to the allegations of deep-rooted corruption in the European Union's parliament, known as Qatargate. Following initial reports by the Flemish broadcaster VRT, the Belgian prosecutor's office confirmed the arrest and subsequently added that various raids took place in Liège and the town of Antisnes this morning. Belgian law enforcement authorities are said to have made additional progress in their ongoing investigation into dozens of incidents in which both the Gulf state, Qatar, as well as the North African Kingdom of Morocco, bribed over 160 European politicians, former politicians, civil servants, and heads of influential non-governmental organizations. It is important to know that both Qatar and Morocco outright reject all of these allegations as baseless, despite ample proof already coming to light, which has already placed three senior politicians behind bars, absent any privileges of bail. Meanwhile, the Italian daily La Repubblica published a report earlier this week revealing that members of the European Parliament, who are currently under investigation in the Qatargate probe, had sent EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell a letter trying to influence an appointment of the next EU special representative to the Arabian Gulf, a post which has surprisingly not been filled to date. Asked earlier this week to comment on the report, Borrell's spokesman Peter Stano said the following. I cannot say much because, as a general rule, we don't comment uh, ongoing investigations. Let's recall that there is an investigation by the relevant authorities, Belgian authorities in this case, who are investigating the whole issue uh, you are calling Qatargate, the whole issue of involvement of Mr. Panzeri and the people around him. So it would be very, very uh, inappropriate to comment on ongoing investigation that is not concluded yet. So. I can only recall that uh, when you mentioned the issue of the EU Special Representative for a Gulf, there is no nomination yet, there is nothing new to report on this, the procedure has not been completed yet, so it's not really up to us to comment any kind of speculations being written in, in one media or another. Turning to Israel's northern neighbor Lebanon, where Qatar is reportedly bolstering its influence after its Gulf neighbors under the leadership of Saudi Arabia ostracized a crisis-ridden country over the deepening influence of the Islamic Republic of Iran through its militant proxy Hezbollah. With much needed funds from both the World Bank and international monetary fund organizations held back over Beirut's failure to pass much needed reform due to deep-rooted corruption, millions of dollars in Qatari aid have effectively bought Doha a seat at the table as it for the first time joined a meeting in Paris along with officials from France, Saudi Arabia and the United States earlier this week for discussions focusing on Lebanon's political and economic crises. Moreover, after US-led mediation secured a precarious maritime boundary agreement between Israel and Lebanon late last year, Qatar, which has good ties with Iran and hosts the leadership of the Islamist Hamas in its small yet oil-rich country, has managed to take over a stake of 30% of the recently attained Lebanese maritime blocks, 4 and 9, where gas explorations by the French multinational corporation, Total Energies and the Italian ENI are set to commence as soon as possible, as was relayed to the Lebanese caretaker prime minister earlier this month, 
when Qatar's acquisition of the 30% stake was unveiled and ratified. Exploration means that there is a probability which is not 100%. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we are not willing to do it, but the impatience is in fact that we are committed to really execute this first well as soon as possible. Uh, and we have already mobilized all the teams, 20 persons of Total Energies are there, with the support of ENI teams, of Qatar Energy teams, uh, and of course of the LPA and the Ministry. I am positive. I am positive, okay, from a geological point of view, I am positive. I'm positive also because uh, we have really a, a wonderful team. If we think about uh, Qatar Energy, we think about Total, we are talking about the best company in the world. So for me, it's an is a honor to be in Lebanon with these two companies. وبموجب الاتفاقيات ستستحوذ قطر للطاقة على حصة تبلغ 30% في كلتا المنطقتين بينما ستحتفظ توتال انرجيز وإني بحصة قدرها 35% لكل منهما Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News We would like to encourage you to persist with prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and God willing, we'll see you again on Monday at the same time.